In the last Domania, we always try to push the limit. But what happens when you break it? This week's event of the World Cup was a great level by Haraldinho, but it wasn't without its controversy. So follow along as we watch faster and faster replays and see how the pros can bend the physics to their will. We'll start out here in 100th place where we have Coxo 17, just to get an idea and a feel for the level. So starting out here, towards the right, you have one apple to pick out here. It's very easy to just come against this wall. Nice tiny bounce there as well on the wall to convert that momentum back. And now driving here towards the left, does a jump here for the brick polygon. Avoids this stone polygon here and comes out for the left hand apple here. And so far a very nice replay, not getting stuck anywhere. Very nice, even a bounce on the wall there. And here he avoids this corner to land in this very, very big loop here. And will he make it directly to the flower? He will with a nice push with front wheel and brake. So a very simple level all in all. Just take this apple here to the right, come out all the way to the left, grab this one. And then again, avoiding here nicely, but going low so he can land in the downward slope here. And then just a nice push with front wheel brake to get straight to the flower. So a nice replay by Coxo17. And with that, we will jump down into 50th place, but with a little bit of a twist this time. You see right here we have two players who are competing for the 50th place and it's Terbo in the black and white shirt and it is Kuchitsu in the white and black shirt. <laughs> but to make it a bit simpler, Terbo has his own name on the shirt and Kuchitsu is in the I shirt. So with that said, we'll follow them and see who managed to get that 50th place. Let's see, Terbo actually has a tiny bit of a faster start there. Maybe it's a little bit lower FPS, but uh, they have a little bit different bounce and Kuchitsu actually takes the lead here. So you can see Terbo is a tiny bit in the front, but Kuchitsu has a nice early push and lands with the back wheel straight on the corner and is able to start gassing right away. Terbo a little bit slower on that gassing, so now it is Terbo here trying to catch up with Kuchitsu. And let's see if he can do it. They both avoid that stone polygon, but Terbo actually comes out with a very nice uh, strong push here and good gassing all the way on that upward slope. So he's, he's able to pass Kuchitsu here towards the end of the level. And let's see, both of them coming in for this avoidance here of the corner. Both of it do it well. Terbo getting a tiny snag on top of that polygon though. And I think, yeah, that allows Kuchitsu actually to catch up here right towards the end. But Terbo has a significant lead. But Kuchitsu has a stronger bounce and they both finish at the same time. Let's see that again. Terbo had a tiny bit of a lead, but Kuchitsu had a very nice start here. Able to gas very early. Then they come down. Terbo has more speed here coming out of that jump and out of that uphill. But then here towards the end, Kuchizu is able to go a little bit lower so he's, and doesn't get that snag. So he's able to catch up, but Terbo has more speed. But then in the end here, Kuchizu just has a, su such a strong bounce towards his flower that he's able to catch up at the very last second. So in the end, Kuchizu and Terbo finish at the exact same time in 50th place with a 28-17. And there was some discussion during the event about bug bounces. And it is a kind of tricky subject, but as you could tell, Kuchisu just came and basically just by the bounce, he got a way stronger bounce directly to the flower than Terbo and was able to catch up from that bounce. And while like 99% of all bounces are completely normal, in certain cases, and especially at high speeds like you have here when you've fallen all this way and driven all this way, you are more likely to get stronger bounces because the velocity of the bounce depends on how close your wheel is to the middle of the bicycle. And if you get too close, you get kind of a division by zero scenario where the physics can bug out and that would result in a bug bounce. And for our next two replays, it's Denmark versus Sweden, as we're following Rigger in the RDK shirt versus Bien in the EF shirt. So let's see what these two players came up with. Both of them starting out here towards the right. Let's see if there's any difference here in the bounce or so. Looks like not. But actually, Rigger has a way later vault here, and that allows Bien to take an early lead, it looks like. They are both completely equal here. Bien vaulting already. Rigger, you can see in the background, has not vaulted yet. He only vault vaults here, actually. So that allows Bien to start gassing very, very early here on the corner. Rigger a tiny bit behind. So let's follow him here as he actually goes for a very high jump here and a nice push from that hang. But Bien instead goes for the hang on this brick polygon above. Let's see that again. Bien here in the background. He goes low, jumps here and goes for a back wheel hang on this brick polygon here. And comes in here for the wall and actually goes for a very, very nice bounce here on the wall as well. And he has a huge lead over Rigger so far. But maybe a little bit less speed because he went for that bounce. But it looks like Bien is in the lead and he will be grabbing the flower before Rigger. 
Sweden does defeat Denmark in this case. But let's see this again. Bjorn has an early lead. And Rieger goes for this very high jump in the background. We didn't see that in the previous replays either. Bjorn going here for the hang. And Rieger also getting a very nice push here with the front wheel on this stone polygon. And coming up here and then doing the loop like we saw in the previous replay. Bjorn doing his very nice bounce down there. But there is no way that Rieger can catch up here even though he avoids that corner very nicely. And gets a very early gas here in the downhill actually. So really nicely done by Rieger as well. But it's not enough to catch up to Bjorn. So in the end we have Rieger in 44th place at 28.09 while Bien grabs the 36th place with a 27.85. And with that we'll jump into the customary 30th place where we have, we have a lot of like <laughs> similar times here. We have two players in a shared 34th place and then we have three players in the shared 31st place actually. And let's see, do we have a fourth or is there someone else in 30th place? Let's see, we have Ismo and is that one shared? It's not. So we have Ismo in 30th place with a 27.82, actually only improving 0.3 seconds on Bien's time. So it's an unbelievably tight battle here, literally only improving 100th of a second with so many replays at a time. So with that, let's see how Ismo was able to beat Bien by 0.3 seconds. Bien actually has a tiny bit faster start, maybe it's playing with lower FPS. But let's see, Bien keeping his lead, they both have a very similar start here. But Ismo is actually able to keep his front wheel down a little bit lower, so he doesn't have to do this turning and gassing down the front wheel that Bian has to do. So he is gaining some speed now here, and Ismo does go for the bottom route here, not going for the hang. So let's see how it compares. They both come up here, Bian goes for his bounce, but Ismo has more speed coming out of the loop, avoids the corner, and does have a huge lead over Bian. But they're only a few hundreds apart. So let's see, Ismo comes here, Bian has a stronger bounce, but we know that Ismo still beats Bian. And it looks like maybe going down here in the beginning was a little bit faster. But Ismo did have maybe a tiny bit better start as well. But uh, then in the end here again, it all comes down to the bounce. Ismo has a huge lead, gets the bounce, Bien gets a stronger bounce. And they both come in here, but Ismo still gets the win. And with that, we'll jump into 10th position unless we have something else highly upvoted along the way. I finish in 27th. I didn't have as much time to play this level as I would have liked. But uh, we can still, it's still very tight, but we actually have a gap here down to Sifias' time from 75 to 63. But then it gets very tight again. We have a shared 23rd place with 61. Elrond comes in with 60, 59, 58, 57, 56, 52. That's almost a big gap for this level. And we do actually have some votes here for Moon Jelly. Let's follow Moon Jelly here in the black shirt and see how he was able to beat Ismo in this event. A little bit faster start again, just like we saw Bien having. Maybe it is Ismo's start that was a little bit slower. And he gets a very, very nice start here. Very good bounce here on the wall. Very nice push. And look how he's able to gas down the front wheel just a tiny, tiny bit here. Turns, gases a little bit to get the perfect rotation to get that back wheel to align on the very corner. And is able to gas right away. That start took so much precision. Oh, and he goes for a long jump here as well. Very, very nice style. It's a little bit like the rigor style that we saw. But he gets a push with the back wheel instead. So it goes up with an olive vault. Is able to stop in the middle, rotate, like again here, cancelling the rotation and also gassing here a little bit to just keep that wheel exactly where you want it. So you can go for a push with gas straight on this polygon. Such a nice alignment there in the air and actually goes for a wheel pressure here on the ground as well to keep that momentum. Very, very nice style here by Moon Jelly. And it does give him a huge lead over Ismo here. And they both come in here for the drop. Maybe it gets a little bit of a touch here on that uh, corner, but so does Ismo. So I don't think it's too much harm done and coming in here and the bounce is not that strong, not as strong as Ismos, but it just has such a big lead. Again, very nice start, perfect the control of the bike, nice jump here, perfect counter gassing to get that push with gas straight on this polygon. That looks so strong actually to do that push, but uh, maybe you don't get the perfect alignment because you do get the wheel pressure here, but Ismo here in the background does get an extra push here, right here so we can get up into the vault uh, or into the slope. So that push also, you have to count that force that he can gain some speed out of that by doing that style instead. But again, Moonjali just has his dominant lead here and comes in. And again, not the strongest bounce, but it's good enough and he beats Ismo. So a great replay by Moonjali. And with that, we'll jump into the competition for 10th place. And on our way, we also see EMA being consistent as always. Sick Mambo, 16th place. Svainer in 14th, D-Technique in 12th place. EMA always travels in a pack, it seems like. 
but in the battle for 10th place, we don't have any EMA members. Instead, we have Smeebu from Mie, who so far has been performing incredibly well in this cup. And Munki from Team Man, who also has had some strong finishes along the way. Let's see who of them was able to grab that 10th place. And we're starting out here following Smeebu in the red shirt. Completely equal starts, no craziness here. Actually, it looks like Munki releases gas here a tiny bit, so you can see his wheel is dropping a little bit early. But let's see, Smeebu has a very, very strong bounce. Almost looks a little bit buggy, actually. Or actually not. But he has a very strong bounce coming out here. But Monkey getting a little bit better gassing here. Afterwards, Smeebu, you can see his uh, wheel hits the corner a little bit in the background here. Uh, his wheel hits there and bounces up a tiny bit. Whereas Monkey gets contact here, but keeps his contact. So that allows Monkey actually to get a little bit more speed and is catching up. And maybe passing Smeebu here by the jump. Both of them going for this very low jump and so far now they're completely glued to each other but Munki has a tiny lead. A little bit different kind of vaulting here. Smeebu vaulting a little bit earlier but both of them are able to get the same kind of pushing uh, rotation there as well. And coming in here for the drop, Munki has a lower drop it seems like or Smeebu getting more caught on that corner. But uh, let's see, both of them coming in here, Smeebu getting maybe an earlier gas but let's see. That is a bug bounce. That, like, I guess I'm subjective now. There is a tool to to calculate bug bounces, and I'm sure Marco used it for this replay. But to me, this bounce is completely a bug bounce. Let's see that again. Monkey in a clear lead. It even ha it has like a wheel pop and everything here. Like, is this actually a legit bounce? Look. Going slow and like with this extra wheel pop here and again high speed bounces are weird because your wheel gets so close to the center of the bike so you're so close to that like division by zero but yeah for now I'm just gonna assume that it's fine because if we do scroll up here it did say bounces were checked by Marco or they were being checked right before the results so for now we have to trust the tool that we have that Marco has checked these bounces and again normally this is not a problem at all in Elastomania but there are a few levels and a few certain places like in this level where you can tend to get two strong bounces but since Mibu is in the results we can assume that his bounce is legit and then we come down here again to the 10th place but we see that still Monkey beats Mibu by one hundredth of a second and claimed the 10th place anyway. And with that, we'll jump into 5th place unless we have something along the way. Actually, we have 7th place. Wait, what? We have 7th place Njelt and Finman. That means it's a shared 5th place because there's no 6th place. But where's ninth place? Like maybe it was a bug bounce that was removed or something. So Monkey got 10th place. Njelt and Finman got 27-23. And then we have Raven in 5th place and we also have someone else in 5th place. Let's see who it is. Because in 5th place we also have Yali. And Yali has a vote but I would watch it anyway because it is 5th place. Raven in the black shirt, Yali without a custom shirt. Let's see how they both got 27-21. Following Raven here, it looks like Yali actually has a tiny bit faster start here in the background. Has like a millimeter of a lead. But both of them coming up here and Raven pulling away. Let's see how he's able to actually get so much more speed. It is... Look, th these are the tiny differences I'm talking about here. Yale is in the background, Raven comes in here, and you will see that Raven breaks a tiny bit right there. His back wheel stops spinning. Somewhere around right here it will stop. And that will allow him to get a little bit more uh, counterclockwise rotation. So his back wheel gets up and clears the corner better than Yalis does, because if you gas, the wheel tends to uh, rotate... Uh, in this case clockwise so by breaking there he gets more rotation doesn't get stuck on the corner so Raven has a huge lead over Yali so far very very nice start by Raven here and let's see how Yali will catch up because we know they will end up in the same time but uh, so far Raven is clearing everything very well and lands very early here in the slope and comes in for the bounce and like this is just Let's see Yali's replay here again. Yali is completely behind and doesn't even get like good contact here <laughs> with the slope. So Raven is just pulling away and this is just a bug bounce. It's look, he's so far behind Raven. Let's see, Raven gets to this slope here at 2476. Yali gets to this slope basically like 2515. 
Yali is like 0.4 seconds behind or something. But then he just gets this... It's just completely a bug bounce, isn't it? Like, again, we, we have to assume that Marco checked all these replays, but with this wheel pop and everything, it just looks so buggy, even if maybe the speed is okay if you compare it to the Enigma bounce, or I don't know actually what the, the baseline or the threshold is for like a bounce uh, ferocity or velocity. But this, to me, just looks very buggy. I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm confused here. I'm confused. But we'll leave that for now as we have more important replays to watch. And in this case, we have the battle for third place. It's Team Dot versus Team Mie. JT versus Tali. Here we go. Let's see who gets the third place. We'll follow JT here because we can see Tali in the background behind him. Let's see. Very, very equal start so far. Completely glued to each other. Tali getting a little bit better start here, maybe. Uh, it's very hard to see how. But Tali is pulling away a tiny bit. Let's see the jump, the lean back. And again, avoiding this uh, polygon here. You had to go very low, but you still had to avoid this polygon right here. And you can see them turning at the very same time. Otherwise, you would hit your chin. But yeah, completely equal so far. Good pushes here up into the slope. Looks like Tali has a little bit more speed. And uh, both of them coming out here and going for this uh, avoidance here of the corner. And Tali a little bit in the lead, but JT landing very early here in the slope. is able to get very early gas in the very beginning of that slope. So JT is catching up here, both of them going for a bounce. And wait, who actually won? Let's see again. Completely equal, completely equal. And both of them avoiding. JT a little bit behind, but he's landing earlier here. And he's catching up, both of them going for the bounce at basically the same time. And it is... Tali, who gets the bronze medal. So JT grabs the fourth place at 27.20. And we have a screenshot of the next level here in between. And it is the one made by AKV and me. I'm really excited about this one. And I hope it's going to be a very fun level to play. But Tali grabs the third place with 27.13 actually. So all things considered, a huge improvement from 27.20, beating JT by 0.07 seconds. And we're already seeing here a slight spoiler maybe. I will try to scroll down just a little bit. We see that Zero and AKB are the two players left. Now AKB has been saying for so long that he will beat Zero by 0.01. Was this event the one where AKB finally managed to do so? And I'm not sure about Zero, but I know AKB played the crap out of this level. I think he ended up with some 30 hours or so in total time. So basically one hour per second of this level played. But let's see if we finally managed to grab that first place. I will be EA biased and follow AKB here, but we have Zero in the background. Completely equal. Let's see the starts here. Good bounces on the wall. Coming out a little bit different position. AKB actually has a huge lead already in the beginning. Let's see. Both of them coming in for the bounce here. And AKB just faster bounce, very well-timed push here on the corner of that spike. And is able to start guessing very early here. And he is pulling away from zero. Is this the one where AKB wins? Let's see, both of them coming in for the lean back. AKB keeping his lead here. Zero catching up. Zero has a very nice push here. He's, he's behind, but I don't know. He just times his push and can gas very, very far on this uh, upward slope here. So zero is catching up by the apple. And let's see, both of them coming in here for the, for the corner. They're completely equal here. But AKB has a very nice landing. We uh, He found this move, or I don't know who actually found this move, but we were playing it in our uh, in our team here, where you use this extra vault here, but then counter vault, and you're able to gas very early in the slope. Both of them coming in here for the bounce, and... Did Zero just bug bounce as well? Both of them coming in here, basically equal. And let's see, who has more speed, actually? Basically equal speed, I would say, but AKB is in the lead. Both of them coming in for the bounce. And uh, bouncing here on, on this wall. AKB does an early vault here to compress even more. Zero a little bit later. But zero, zero compresses later, but bounces earlier. And just flies out and beats AKB. And I don't know if Zero actually gained that much momentum. Let's follow Zero here instead. He does get pretty early gas in the downward slope, but I I think this looks buggy. I think this looks like a bug bounce. Like, look how fast the compression ends compared to AKB, who is like, 
AKB's bounce feels normal. It compresses and then it lets out a little bit. Zero, it feels like it never really compresses. It just lets out and it just flies with like instant um, conversion of the speed. It's not so much the end result of the speed. It's just that it accelerates so fast out of that compression. But in the end, we have AKB with a 2710, which is an insane... <laughs> yeah, sure. Which is actually an insane time in this level, as you can tell. But Zero comes in at 27.02. But AKB was leading before the bounce. I'm... I'm not sure how I feel about this. <laughs> let's, um, let's see what people said. And I just started reading. First of all, AKB's top finishes is insane. He got three 27 10s and he got a multitude of 16th, 18th, 19th. He was just going insane this event, but he was hoping for a 26th. And I think by merging these runs, he would have been able to get it, but uh, was not able to do all the perfect moves in a single run. But yeah, <laughs> I... I just kind of agree. Honestly, how was that accepted? Yeah, it's... <laughs> I can honestly just agree with what everyone is saying. That was a bug. And not just Zero's wreck. I think like Smeebus wreck as well. Jali's wreck as well. Yeah, remove Jali too. This was a weird event. Oh, here we have it. Okay, nice. Uh... So Jali clearly has the strongest bounce, then Smibu, then Zero. Yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised by that. Let's see. So yeah, these are speed curves from the level that uh, Marco has been analyzing. And you can tell here is where the bounce happened, around 25.7 seconds or so. And you can clearly see that Jali's replay stands out with the amount of speed he gains after the bounce, which is basically the amount of speed he has right before the bounce as well. And the reason you slow down is because you're compressing and he's driving, you know, up the hill, so he is slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, and then hits the brake, and maybe hits a vault at the same time, and that just releases a lot of speed at the same time. And then the next one that does stand out is this brown one here, and that is Smibu. And then also someone who gained a lot of speed here after the bounce is Zero. And you can tell his bounce came a little bit earlier because uh, Zero and AKB just had faster runs before that bounce. But what is interesting here is we have Zero gaining a lot of speed after his bounce, but AKB, who actually got to the bounce a tiny bit before Zero, there is no spike. AKB is basically losing speed after his bounce. And to me that makes sense because when you're coming up here and you're hitting your bounce, you're flying upwards. And as soon as you hit your bounce, you're not gassing on the ground or anything anymore. So in theory, as soon as you hit your bounce, gravity will start acting on you. So you will lose speed after your bounce. There is nothing to allow you to gain speed but I guess that reasoning doesn't completely work because if you remember Bien's bounce here, for instance, he will have a high speed as he's approaching the wall here. But then once he compresses by this apple, his speed will drop to basically zero. And then once he comes out of the bounce and goes back, that speed will come back. Maybe not as high, but it should look something like this. So maybe there should be some spike in speed, but it feels like it shouldn't increase here because you're not really compressing against the wall. You're just driving, 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 and then not driving anymore. So you're never really losing that speed in the first place, maybe. Yeah, I'm I'm honestly not sure. But the jury voted 3-0 to zero that Zero's wreck is legit. But then I guess they also voted that Jalis and Smibus wrecks are legit. But I don't know if that was a, as clear of a majority. And Marcus says here that uh, the Enigma bounce, which is, of course, a controversial bounce. For those of you who don't know, that is the 47th internal level where now Mielts has the world record but before Mielts there was Stini who had this record for a record-breaking 214 tables longer than any other level or any other world record in history and you can see clearly longer Zwex warm-up with 122 is the second longest that someone has ever held a world record and for reference here is that world record replay by Stini that was so controversial for so long because of the ferocity of his bounce being considered maybe a bug bounce and here it is and you can tell this looks way weaker and tamer than the bounces we just saw in this level but i guess percentually they weren't as strong but uh, the, the amount of velocity that Cini gets out of this bounce here uh, again is by many considered a, considered a bug bounce but uh, 
where do you draw the line? It's very hard. Basically, this run became the line because this world record was accepted, and that in itself set the standard for what is accepted. And since then, this has kind of been the threshold for the ferocity that you should be able to get out of a bounce without it being a bug. But yeah, it's... Uh, it's quite a discussion here about whether these wrecks should have been accepted or not. But now they are, and as Arzenic says, the pitchforks have already been sharpened. But yeah, Zero also has a good point. Like he says, he's played <laughs> average 25 hours per event for 10 weeks straight with only three days off since the cup started. I don't doubt that Zero didn't do his best and play a hell of a lot this event as well. And I'm sure he's also deserving of winning this event. But yeah, it just... When you see AKB in the lead, but Zero catching up with a stronger bounce, it does raise some questions of how strong of a bounce should be allowed. And to me, maybe it shouldn't just be about the amount of velocity gained after the bounce, but also the time in which you gain that velocity. Like, how steep is this curve for you to achieve that speed? But yeah, there are many valid opinions here in the chat if you want more information about what people thought you should come and read the world cup chat on discord but i think what is needed is yeah just a final discussion and some decision on which bounces should be accepted or not and with that we see zero finman and Audi still in the top three and akb is trailing tally for fourth place by just 10 points or so and then we have smibu trailing akb by only one and a half points and down here we see the ema pack consistent as always but maybe looking to climb into the top 10s here. And there's still four events to go, that's more than a quarter of the cup, so anything can still happen. But right now it's looking like AKB is our only hope at stifling this Finnish domination, at least keeping Smibu out for now. But there's no way to know where we'll be after that 15th event. And for our final replay, we'll take a look at a save loaded replay where Jblaze challenged Cepheus to finish the level using this pipe up here. So if you thought this was a bug bounce down here, I think we're gonna see something even crazier in this replay. And here we have Cepheus always ready for a tool assisted challenge. Let's see, coming out for the bounce, nothing gonna be crazy here. But he's gonna be grabbing this left hand apple and then use the pipe that is up to the right of the start. Let's see, coming down here, it is the normal style so far. Let's see, gets good gassing here. And... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's a bug bounce. <laughs> And a beautiful head first pipe as well to get straight to the flower. Oh, right, the flower is up here, but it gets it no problem. But yeah, that's also what you can do in this game if you try to divide to if you try to divide by zero. But uh, yeah, very nice replay by Cepheus and uh, really cool stuff here coming in head first as well. But uh, again, this was a really nice level by Harald. Just maybe a little bit of a shame about this uh, bounce ending. That maybe caused some controversy, but uh, what is a World Cup without controversy anyway, right? But uh, for now, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.